Hello, everyone, and welcome to the service work series on our new Getting Started splash page. In this module, we're going to be covering the scheduling and dispatch option. Um, this one is a little bit more involved, so please feel free to pause this video anytime uh, that you need to so that you can follow along in your own uh, screen. Uh, so we're going to go in. So on our first screen, uh, we have the option for AM and PM services. Uh, so on the job assignment, if this switches over, um, we're going down to the scheduling information. That's going to control whether or not you have this AM and PM option. So if you schedule a job, it's sometime between 8 and noon for the morning or noon and the rest of the day for the evening. Uh, and that's what that controls. Um, as you can see, it's marked yes. Um, we have this here for the average job. This is what ServiceWorks uses when it's doing your scheduling. Uh, once you put 60 minutes in, it knows basically if you have two technicians, each one of those persons takes about an hour to do, and you've got three people wanting a job on Tuesday, then it knows that it can schedule two of the jobs, but that third job is probably going to have to be set for a different time if you pick the specific times. Uh, the time slots, this comes in particularly in handy when you're using our premium feature of the instant booking page. This will allow your customers, who you give the URL to, to come into the system and select the time slot that they want to be scheduled for. I will give you a video on the instant booking setup, uh, probably coming very soon within the next day or two. Please be on the lookout for that. The next section is our zones. The service works when you set up for your free trial, comes with an unmapped zone and a company default zone. The difference is uh, when you have and you're creating a job, it is going to go to the zone that you have defined. Here, you can select the pencil icon, we can go in and we can add zip codes. If you create a job right now that has zip code, for instance, 10005, it's going to automatically be assigned to this company default zone. If you create a job that the zip code or the city is not defined, it's going to be assigned to the unmapped zone. Again, this comes in handy if the instant booking page is used and someone is creating a job or requesting a job to be done that may not be defined in your area. That's going to help it stick out on the schedule board. Now, one thing I do want to show you, um, if you click the pencil, you can use this and you can do a zip or a zip pattern. The zip pattern does come in handy for our Canadian residents who their zip codes are set up just a little bit different than ours. They have three digits, a space, and then three more digits. So they could use this pattern to set up that zip code of the first three digits and anyone who has an address with those three digits would be able to be added to a specific zone. I would like to point out that our Getting Started page is kind of just a friendly UI page to help get you things set up. We do have some final things to move over. So if you go into the configuration and you go to service settings, and this is just the regular good old fashioned settings pages, service settings, you'll see that you have zones here as well. This is where that getting started is populating from and to. It's basically a mirror image. If you click the pencil here and you use the zip code drop down, you will see you can also add a state and a city. We are moving that to the getting started page so you'll be able to use those options. I just wanted to show you this to know that you're not locked to just a zip pattern or a zip on that getting started page, you can come into the actual settings and add some fine tuning if needed until our beta version is complete. Uh, now let's go back to our getting started page. Uh, this is the check mark if you, as I was speaking earlier, if someone created a job with this 1005 zip code, Checking this box is what would automatically put that job into your company default zone with that zip code. 
if you leave this unchecked, every job you will have to manually move from unmapped into company default zone. Uh, we do have the option. Um, it is a premium feature. If you are going to be in a big city or a large area and you need to set up more than just a company default zone, then give us a call. We can work with you on getting that set up. Our next option is the in route functionality. Uh, the way this works is in the mobile app, along the top of the mobile app, we have some tabs. And the furthest right tab is basically how your technician lets your customer know that they're on their way to their house. Uh, if they click the in route uh, tab, it's basically going to send this notification if you have it set up in your settings. So if we go to the template that goes out for the email, uh, and this is editable right here on the screen, this is the default that goes out, you'll see there's tech where it's in brackets, this is pulling from the job that you have set up. So anything in brackets pulls from the job in ServiceWorks. Anything not in brackets is free text. You can type in whatever it is that you want to see. So on this instance, I have tech name list is on the way to resolve ticket. Now we do have some capabilities for tech name list. If I go to the configuration, you'll see tech name list here and you have the option to show Sam's first name and his last name. Or if I check off this, then that email is just going to say Sam is on the way. If I turn that on, it'll say Sam Spade is on the way. Uh, we also have, if you decide to use this tag, then you can just show the text initials if you don't want your customer to know the text full name. Uh, if you are going to do some design work on here and you happen to have a test job already built into ServiceWorks, you can enter that test job number here and click this little preview symbol and it's going to pop up a window that will let you see what it looks like that your customer is going to get. So it's just a quick way to kind of preview the email that goes out. Uh, next, we have the SMS template or text messages. It works the same way as your email template. It has the brackets that it's pulling from the job. Uh, so basically, the or the text message, sorry, that your customer is going to get is going to basically say, you know, Sam Spade from ABC Company is heading your way. He should be there in about 15 minutes. See you soon. Um, now, this is the texting option. Um, again, this is in our higher packages, not our starter package. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you're wanting to use text messages. And then we have robocall. Uh, we have some customers, you may have some customers who uh, their phone number is an office contact and that landline can't get text messages. This is the option if you enable it using the square here that that will call the phone number and it will it will read out to them basically Sam Spade from ABC company is heading your way ETA is about 15 minutes see you soon so it will read that message to them all right uh, going on uh, this is going back to the tabs again uh, once your technician is done with the job there is is the tab in the mobile app. He will click and it says trip is completed. He's going to get a pop-up that says, is the job almost also completed? He'll click yes. And that's going to trigger this email that will go out to your customer. And that's here. And we can drag this down a little bit bigger. Now, again, these are totally customizable. Um, if you, you can change it here. If you go into configuration, uh, let's close this window into notification templates. Here are all the templates that we have. So right now we're looking at the tech job completed. It's probably going to look very similar to you. Uh, you can totally erase everything that's in here and build your own, whatever you need to do. If you have someone in your office or if you have a web developer that you work with, 
if you click this source button, this is the HTML page. If you have something, a nice looking letter that you want to go out, get the HTML code. You can paste it in here and just click save. I'm just going to refresh so I'm not deleting anything here. Um, just click the save button down here at the bottom and you will see the preview of your outgoing email there. Um, again, and that is in configuration, oops, sorry, notification, template, and then here's all the templates that we have as well. The getting started, again, is just the basic ones that you need uh, to get things rolling and get you up and running as fast as possible. Uh, SMS or texting, uh, again, if you enable that, anything that you type with the brackets, you do not have to use the brackets. You could just say, our technician is on his way, please plan accordingly. Something short and simple as that. Uh, this is limited to 160 characters, I would like to mention. Uh, so if you have something long in there and you're getting the message that your text messages are not being sent or some type of error, I would check that. It's a 160 character limit. Again, robocall, whatever you type here, they will get a phone call on a landline or their cell phone, whatever the phone number is attached to, and the robot will read your message to them. Also 160 characters. We'll move on to the appointment reminder. And again, you're going to start seeing a pattern here. Everything is in a template. Everything uses the same features. Uh, so there, again, there's our tech name. Here's our email template. Again, we can drag down. You can edit this to be whatever it is that you need. Um, looks like our little icon here is broken. Uh, but you can actually, if you have a picture of your technician, in his profile under admin company users, it will send his picture to your customer so they know who to expect to be showing up. And this is enabled because the check mark is there. SMS template, again, there's the, temp, the text message that will go out. This is not currently enabled, but I can enable it by checking the box. Robocall, again, good to go. Now, if you want to put some other information in, we do have a legend here. If you expand that, here are all the things that you can include into your template over here. So if I want to have a round company logo, let's say, you know, copy the bracket as well as the word. And I can go over here. Uh, Probably not on the robocall, can't display a logo there, but we'll go down and we'll insert the company round logo. If you have your logo uploaded on site settings, it will pull and display there. So just an example of all of the different things you can add to your templates and get those going and customize just the way that you want to go out to your customers. We'll close that window uh, and here's our disclaimers so you can add a disclaimer here type in the name of your disclaimer whether it's a pre-job disclaimer or after and then you can enter your text this would go out in your email that contains your invoice or it could go out on the invoice or it can go out on your estimate uh, we have those templates in the configuration section under configuration invoice. Here is the invoice email template or that it could be included. Here's the invoice template itself uh, that can be included for your disclaimer, I believe. Uh, maybe it isn't in this one. It might be in our estimate. So we also have the estimation settings. Estimation template. Yep, there's our disclaimer. It will pull uh, that we have in there. And then we have the email that goes out uh, that has the estimate attached to it. There is a web view, if you will, an HTML view of the invoice and the estimate. And there's also a PDF that automatically gets generated and is attached to that email. And again, those are in your estimation settings and invoice settings under your configuration tab. And going back to our, our little getting started, here's where we set those disclaimers up that you can attach. And that pretty much covers all of the scheduling and dispatch sections. Um, 
hope that wasn't too involved for you. If you have any questions, just reach out to our support team. They'll be glad to help you with any questions that you may have. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for our next module.